Welcome to Roller Coaster Fanatics! It is now time for another Fanatic List! You guys want more? Well, we got more! We have Fanatic List! We're gonna do Bush Gardens Williamsburg! It is one of my favorite amusement parks that I've ever been to. They may not have a lot of roller coasters, but they have a good selection. For what they have, they have a really good selection of roller coasters. So, let's get started! This is basically a list that I put up. It is not a countdown, it's just a list of, uh, in random order of, uh, all the roller coasters. So, here we go! Let's start off with the newest roller coaster, Tempesto. This opened in 2015. A lot of people are wondering, is it really enjoyable? There's a lot of clones out there, and it doesn't look good. It's a very short ride and all that other stuff. In my opinion, it's enjoyable. It's my uh, fourth favorite roller coaster at the park. Uh, it might not be saying much, but it's saying a lot. It's an amazing roller coaster. It's short and sweet. That's all I have to say. It's just short and sweet. It's got some great hang time, and I love the intensity on this ride. Um, a, a lot of people say, well, what about long lines? Because this ride capacity is horrible. No uh, no offense, Bush Gardens. But they, they are so used to dispatching trains very quickly that the lines actually move quite frequently actually the uh, the lines are usually not long at all or they might look long but they go by really quickly and of course as I already said this ride can be very intense let's move on to the other launch roller coaster yay or nay this is for Bolton now for me it's a nay here is why I'm not a big fan of this roller coaster for some odd reason I love it don't get me wrong this is like a fantastic roller coaster I like what Zier did with the launch building but to be honest, it's more towards the family side. Plus, there's also a rattle that's been growing on uh, parts of it. It's, it's mainly towards, like, during the uh, building effects. I know in the Helix, anyway, I felt a huge rattle. Um, and is it intense? Um, only in the building. Um, even though it launches quite faster outside of the building, it'll launch you up to 53 miles per hour. And the drop is really fun. But the only big intense parts that I got in away besides the building were the uh, last two turns where it has like the S turn uh, that follows Big Bad Wolf's path. That's the only really intensity I found that doesn't include the uh, effects in the building. But the one thing I love about this roller coaster is the theming. This theming is just on point. One of the best theming roller coasters I've ever been on. Let's move on to the oldie but a goodie. This is Loch Ness Monster. First of all, we're going to start as we always got to ask the question, is it a good arrow or is it a bad arrow? This is actually one of the good arrows. Now, that leads on to the next question. It's smooth. I'd say it's about 70 percent smooth um it is a really old roller coaster this was uh, opened in 1978 so it is not perfect smooth at all but it's got to be one of the smoothest roller coasters and one of the best uh, aerodynamics roller coasters um made by ron tumor because ron tumor i mean to be honest he made some all right decent aerodynamics roller coasters but in my opinion his really good ones were this one and i think um he did Magnum XL 200. I'm not sure. Do not hold me on that. But anyway, back to this. He did a really fantastic job. I love those interlocking loops, and the intensity is huge. I was I like this better than Verbolton. I'm one of those people that really love this ride. That drop feels steeper than it actually is. And man, is that those interlocking loops, man? They're just icing on the cake. And now we have the three B&Ms. Let's start with the newest B&M and go down to the oldest B&M. So the newest one is the Griffin. This one opened in 2007. This is what used to be anyway before Valerie Vin will open. It is right now the tallest and longest and fastest uh, B&M dive coaster. This is before Valerie Vin has opened. But once Valerie Vin has opened, you can forget about this roller coaster. But anyway, intensity. Intensity is insane on this ride. Oh my gosh, these dive coasters no intensity and speed. They are just fun. Now, the only problem with this roller coaster, and I say this for all dive coasters, is the duration. These dive coasters are not long. They are over really quick. Which is kind of sad because they're very intense. Once again, like Tempest so this is just a short and sweet. This is just short and sweet. Got a nice drop in versions and a nice speed. And then it's over. Worth riding? Yes. Um, it is definitely worth riding. Lines go by quick besides capacity. Everybody just likes to pee their pants because this ride looks like a monster in the park. It's the tallest ride in the park. So it, it looks like it's a monster. So uh, people get scared. Of course, the general public are like, holy crap. <laughs> I don't know if I want to ride that, man. It, it looks too much. It, it, it really, it, it's a fantastic ride, though. I mean, it's really awesome. 
And now the next one, right in the middle, but is one of my favorite and is I think is the best ride in the park, and that is Apollo's Chariot. This is the B&M Hyper Roller Coaster, the first one made by B&M, fun fact. Uh, and I just answered the best ride for me at this park. Airtime is nuts. I mean, it, it ranges for some people. It's old airtime. It's not the newer B&M airtime where you get ejected out of your seat. You feel mainly the floater airtime. Um, that's what this ride is really good at doing. But the nighttime ride is intense on this. I don't know why. This one and Diamondback have really good, and maybe Nitro, they have really good nighttime rides. Just in there, pitch black, in the dark. And here's the thing. A lot of you say, wait a minute, isn't this taller than Griffin? The drop is, because remember, this thing is on a hill and goes down into the river. It's only 170 feet in reality, but the drop is 210 feet, which makes the ride a hyper coaster, quote. Um... But it's really a great ride, and I love it so much. And now the final one, the oldest B&M in the park. This opened two years before Apollo shared, and this is Alpine, guys. This is currently right now the tallest, longest, and fast. No, it's not the longest. Excuse me. I have forgotten. I, I forgot about Banshee there. This is the tallest. B&M Inverticoaster, and that's it. It's no longer the longest or the fastest because Banshee beat both of those records. But Alpine Guys is still a phenomenal ride. So is it worth riding? Yes, it is. A lot of people have mixed reviews with this roller coaster just because it can be very jerky, and a lot of people say B&M did not do a good job with this roller coaster. I'm one of those people that love Alpine Guys. Alpine Guys is one of my favorite B&M Inverted roller coasters behind Banshee. A lot of people say also Monster's better. I have not ridden Monta yet, so I can't decide for that, um, but it is definitely worth riding. It's extremely intense. I love the speed. It, the speed catches you, especially on the drop. You're like, oh my gosh, Like it, it feels like you're going faster than you actually are. It is insane. And a lot of people also don't like the theming, but the theming is loosely, but it, it, it has that theme of the sky ride. The trains have um, skis on the back of them, and there's also huts because it also rhymes with the Liz Scoot, which has some theming. But overall, this is a really good ride. A lot of people do not like the jerkiness on the Cobra roll, which makes sense. you got to kind of prepare yourself for that. Same thing with the mid-course break run. But to be honest, this is a fantastic roller coaster. So that is Fanatic List for Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you all for watching. And as always, roller coaster fanatics, keep coasting.